I'm 200 feet into soybean harvest and I already got to make a parts run to the dealership. What a day. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. And today, it's the second day of harvest. Let's get it on. We missed yesterday because uh, Nathan actually got started in corn harvest. So let's see what we got going on today. I know Cletus is hauling corn and we're gonna start beans. Hey guys, quick reminder, merch is available at Hartung Family Farms. Link will be in the description. You got ball caps, hoodies, sweatshirts. That's the same thing as a hoodie. T-shirt and uh, kind of winter cap. So be sure to get them while they're hot. Alrighty guys, Cletus just took off. Kind of see he's full. We're getting the 400 ready. It's gonna go up and do beans with Pat. Pat's getting the uh, Gearing Hoff corn head taken out, taken off, and we're gonna hook on the bean head. I believe we're gonna go up and do K Hills. Let's go help him out. Back in the old red combine out. Time to get her dirty. I'm gonna go move the 25 out of the way and shut it off. Pat had to move it in order for him to get out. So let's go ahead and move it. gonna move it and pull it right behind that head. 25 is putting its spot now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the uh, radio equipment out of the chopper since we are done chopping for the year. I'm gonna grab the MXT Micro Mobile 115. I'm actually gonna throw that in the Steiger cab. So it's gonna be really easy to put this thing in. All I gotta do is grab the radio, grab the mic, grab the uh, power cord and then we're good to go. And yes, it literally was 30 seconds. And yes, the lights do turn on on the chopper when you open and close the door. I'm gonna take the MXT 400 out of this Sager, put the MXT 115 back in, and I think this thing is eventually gonna go in one of our trucks. Ugh, it's so dang hot. Milk was a bad choice. And that movie. But it is really hot. It's like 75 degrees out right now, guys. Our beans are gonna be dry. All right, the MXT 115 radio is installed on the Steiger. Also got the 21406 extension speaker. So look how loud this thing is. No one's gonna miss Pat and speaking in and yelling at the green cart driver now. So let's go ahead and help Pat get the combine buttoned up. So I'm going over to go grab the bean head. I'm gonna hook onto the pickup. We're gonna pull it up to the field. Sorry, Cal. Sorry, 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 Cal. So I'll hook onto that. Pull that thing up to the field for Pat and Pat's gonna start on beans in a couple hours, probably an hour or so, hopefully. Hey Cal, let me know when I'm good, okay? I good? He didn't say anything, but I don't trust him. Because I wasn't good yet. Should have listened to the cow. Alrighty, bean head is hooked up. Let's go ahead and pull it around, pull it out of the way. And then we're gonna be ready to pull this thing up to the field. All right, Pat's combine's low on coolant, so I'm gonna put some coolant in there, or antifreeze, or R1. Actually, I'm not quite sure what the technical term is, but yeah, we put some coolant in there. You ready? Now he's oiling all the chains. Soybean harvest is underway. Combine is set up. Head's on its way up there. Combine is just leaving. Can I see right there? I'm gonna hop in the grain cart and I'm gonna head up there with him. It's go time. Woo! So now I need to go grab my drone just in case. And then we're gonna head up there. We got a 45 acre piece we're gonna start. It's a 2-9 bean, group two. The one of the last in group two. Basically that means it's like a mid-season bean for us. It's not the longest we plant, but it's not the shortest we plant. Well, we are officially off and running. It is Monday, October 5th, about two in the afternoon. Uh, we're just doing some calibration running today with our eight row, our 2588. About full already, uh, but yeah, we're just calibrating stuff and doing some end rows here. We're off and running, Harvest 2020, finally. Moisture's doing about 21. Um, we don't have it calibrated yet, so the yield's off. And just like that, we have our first breakdown for the year. After the 24th row, we're a hole in the bottom of the dry grain tank, so. Gotta take that shield off and re-weld it quick. Quick little fix, not too bad. But either way, we're gonna get on the board today. We got on the board yesterday with corn. We're gonna get on the board with beans today. Problem is, none of our drying systems are going right now. 
So yes, we have filled up corn. We filled the grain cart up. This bin isn't ready yet. The floor's not done. The pipe's not laid, so we can't use this dryer. And the shiver system's not working, so we gotta get someone out here to fix that. But so we're gonna start on beans while we can. Let's go. I don't like this turn. That's how you smack a bin. We are off, ladies and gentlemen. So I am going to cut a path through this field to try to make compaction as little as possible. But that road over there is pretty narrow, especially if you're taking a full load of beans down. So I'm gonna head up. I'm basically just cutting a path through this field to this waterway. I'll go up the waterway and then over. You can kind of see Nathan cut through all this stuff yesterday. He said it was yielding very, very, very well. I don't know if they calibrate the yield monitor, but very well. And also I don't have a speed rating on my Steiger anymore. That's weird. This corn is still pretty green here. It's definitely not finished yet, but it's just about. But we had a good frost the other day, so I'm guessing we're gonna start losing color on these leaves. But our bean field is right over here. That's where we're gonna be going. I'm guessing Pat is right around this corner. Yep. There he is. We are on the board. Didn't last long, but we're still on the board. All right, so we're trying it out. The yield monitor's not working, so we're gonna try and put the, we put a new yield monitor, yield plate sensing plate in. It's not working, so we're gonna try a different one. So again, our yield mod, we weren't getting any yield or moisture when we were running, so we fixed, we changed the, the yield part, but the moisture is something different. The moisture is right here, so I'm gonna watch. He's gonna run. I'm gonna see if this auger turns. Do not recommend this at home, kids. Have to do a key cycle, because uh, we swapped out that sensor piece, so it needs to reestablish communication. Not sure what he's doing there, but I'm waiting for him to turn it on because I'm going to watch this moisture sensor auger. How this moisture sensor works is grain comes off the clean grain elevator, which it comes out of the body of the combine in this elevator up into the grain tank. But there's a moisture sensor right here where grain gets kicked into there a little bit, goes through it, and then gets augered up, which it's moving right there. I see it. Now I'm going to walk behind him and uh, see if this auger is spinning. get a good look at the bean head and how low we cut you see the two rows of corn behind the silver piece on the bean head as you can kind of see that is corn residue from last year's corn crop that we no-tilled our soybeans into not spinning yet there it goes seems to be working so i'm gonna get out the bean dust now First parks run of the year, so our yield monitor isn't working, or our yield sensor, like I said before. So we're gonna run up to Kuno's and see if there's a different one that we can grab. That's kind of the benefit about living, farming two miles from a closest dealership. It's not gonna set you down very much if you need to go grab some new parts. So let's head over and go grab some new parts. And our local Case IH dealership, Kunal Equipment, is only two minutes away, right in the town of Preston. Like I can see our leg plain as day from here. And I actually see Pat sitting up on top of the hill waiting for me. All right, so I'm heading to Kunal's in DeWitt right now. Um, Pat's actually up there combining right now. So right now it's not the biggest deal in the world. Like we can still, the combine is functionally good, but we don't have what's called a yield monitor, which a yield monitor basically just measures in real time uh, a guesstimate of what, how good that field did, how much yield or how much product came off that field. So if we don't have that, we don't have a good accuracy on how well or how bad a field did. So I'm gonna run to, do, to Kunal's in DeWitt real quick. I'm gonna drop a thousand bucks, or Pat is, Ugh. stings, but, and then we're gonna try and see if it all, see if we can get it to work. Guys, this is what's called a harvest traffic jam. And here's a, kind of my friendly once a year PSA reminder. It is not worth it. Guys, just please, if you encounter harvest vehicles, these guys are busting their tails day in and day out, 14 hours a day, give them a break. Don't pass in a double yellow line. Don't crowd them. You never know when they're gonna be turning left. Just please, five minutes is not worth your life or ours. Just. 
I beg of you, take your time. It's not worth passing the yellow line and endangering both of our lives. So give him a break and give him the five finger wave, not the one. Ooh, look, some soybean harvest going on. Nice. Two big red combines with 40 foot drapers. Sweet. One just, one's right there and one's right here. These 92 or 82 40s. Nice combines. Made it to Kunal, so we will grab that part and get moving because Pat is running and running without a yield monitor, so we need to go. In and out, two minutes. Gonna be back to the farm, back up and running in about a half hour. Got the part. That's why having a local dealership and a great relationship with yours is key to successful farming operation. That's why Kunal Implement and DeWitt and Preston, they take care of us. A combine number one, 8240, and a combine number two. 8240 it looks like a nice track Brent grain cart just saw me a nice John Deere 7700 chopper Whew, it was like a 7750 nice looking unit there there's the combine up on top of the hill right behind see the Preston water tower over there yeah it's right there just making a pass through the middle I see his lights are blinking so he's got a three-quarter of a tank sweet I better get moving right there He's running at least, that's a good thing. I'm coming, Pat. Our seed dealer's here, he's gonna calibrate our yield monitor. I'll go into that a little bit later, but for right now I'm gonna hop in the uh, grain cart and go catch Pat. It's gonna be my first dump of the year right here. We are rolling. What's that? Yeah, you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. I'm trying to keep it towards the back of the grain car so we can unload that little cart in the front. Sweet. All right, I parked the truck. I got it back here just in time for Pat to dump. So I'm going to go out and help him uh, switch out that yield, that yield plate, that mass flow sensor, and then we're going to go ahead and calibrate our yield monitor. So what we were doing is what's called a yield cow. So basically we harvest a known distance. The monitor thinks it knows what it has because what we cut. And then we have this scale cart that comes measuring it. It measures it, gives us the exact weight. We type it in there, it does what's called a cow factor. So it offsets it by a certain percentage. We do a couple of those and typically we find out that's what's good. So I'm gonna go in here. We got a, I got 5,000 pounds I gotta dump over. So I'm gonna go in here and just kind of sho start shoving this way. All right, I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna go dump this and then maybe go fill up the tires with air. Folding up the unload auger. I'm gonna go dump the first truckload of beans for the year, or dump on the first truck of beans. Alrighty, so I need to open up this tarp. Thank you, automatic tarps. And I'm gonna set you guys up on a time lapse. Alrighty, I am unloading as we speak. Didn't line up quite straight. That's all right. With beans, they're heavier than corn, so I'm going to go ahead and put three piles per hopper. That should be good enough for me. We're just going to a bin with these, so it'll be all right. All righty, there we go. Check out the time lapse. <laughs> That one on the other side is about 30 pounds, which is what I want. This one's at 20, so I need to air that thing up. It's gonna be like five minutes, though. So. Because these tires, these big floater tires on the grain cart, they take a lot of air. Alrighty, guys, so real quick, so that yield monitor, what we changed. This is the old one, you can kind of see it's a little worn down. Look how thin that thing is. That's how thick it's supposed to be up top. Look how thin it is. Just from years and years, 10 years of abuse. That's what the new one will look like. That's what we changed. It seems to be working good. We got it cowed, got it within 1%, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and keep running. I'm going to go ahead and catch him. Pat's just about full. There he is. 
So I'm gonna catch him here. He is just about full. Okay, I gotta get moving. He literally was spilling over, just trickling beans as I got in. Beautiful. We're running, ladies and gentlemen. We are running. Hey everyone, I had too much footage for one video, so we're just gonna split it up right here. It just seemed like the easiest transition to make. Hey guys, just a quick reminder, t-shirts, sweatshirts, ball caps, and beanies are only available through Hartung Family Farms, link in the description, through October 28th. That's right, your certified Hartung Family Farms merchandise is only going to be available until October 28th, so you guys really need to act now. And again, every single order is gonna have a personalized note from myself or Chrislin. So let's go ahead and close this video out. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hartung Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now.